Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. For today's video, we're going to be taking an in-depth look into the all-new 2018 Volkswagen Tiguan. In this review, I'm going to cover five main topics including styling, performance fuel economy, interior space, pricing, and general features overview. Of course, I'll take it on a thorough drive and show you many of the unique aspects throughout the interior as well as exterior. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start her up and let her run. The example we're looking at today is a loaded SEL Premium 4 motion which comes equipped with smart key entry and push button ignition. To start, just make sure you have the key fob within the interior, then put your foot on the brake and hit the console mount button to go. For the 2018 model year, Volkswagen is launching the all-new second-generation Tiguan. Larger, more efficient, and significantly more refined, it's designed to compete in the compact crossover segment alongside the Honda CR-V, Ford Escape, Hyundai Tucson, Mazda CX-5, and more. Built on top of Volkswagen's new modular transverse matrix or MQB platform, the Tiguan is 185.1 inches long, 72.4 inches wide, and 66.3 inches high, making it one of the largest offerings in the segment, right in line with the Nissan Rogue. With an efficiently packaged 109.8 inch wheelbase, it also offers one of the roomiest interiors in the segment, with respect to both passenger and cargo space. I've talked about MQB some in prior VW reviews, most recently in my 2018 Atlas review. In a nutshell, it dictates a fixed relationship between the front wheel center line and pedal box. Everything else is variable, allowing for the development of a wider breadth of vehicles based around similar design principles. Like the Atlas, the Tiguan uses stamped steel body and chassis components that boast a large percentage of high strength hot form steel for greater strength and weight savings. It's significantly larger than its predecessor, with overall length growing by 10.6 inches, leading to a roomier interior and the ability to fit a third row seat. Despite being bigger, it's wider and lower, which really enhances the overall proportions. Curb weight for our loaded all-wheel drive tester is about 3,858 pounds. That's approximately 200 pounds heavier than a comparatively equipped 2017 Tiguan. The styling is notably more aggressive and masculine compared to what's typically seen in this segment. It looks more like a scaled-down Atlas, modern yet traditional in nature, especially when looking at it from the side. The front end is dominated by a broad chrome grille that blends into a pair of full LED headlamps, which are standard on the SEL Premium. Flared wheel arches joined by a one-piece body crease that extends from the front fenders and around the liftgate uninterrupted add serious definition to the side profile touches of bright work and an upscale appearance. Out back, you'll find a spoiler perched on top of the sloping rear window. LED tail lamps are standard on all trims. The lower rear fascia is finished with twin chrome exhaust garnishes. At launch, the Tiguan will be available in five trim levels. The entry model S will begin at $25,345 before a destination and handling fee of $900. This is followed by the $29,080 SE, the $32,550 SEL, and the $36,250 SEL Premium. All-wheel drive is a $1,300 option. If you want a third row seat in addition to all-wheel drive, it's an extra $500. Volkswagen kept things simple by differentiating the trim levels with ascending grades of standard features, driver assistance tech, and other premium amenities. Aside from choosing the drivetrain, there will be only three optional packages, including a driver assistance package for the S, a panoramic sunroof with ambient lighting for the SE, and a sporty R-Line appearance package for the SEL and SEL Premium. The 2018 Tiguan is scheduled to arrive in dealerships later this month. The Tiguan comes standard with 17 by 7 inch alloy wheels and 215 all-season tires. However, the SEL Premium has these gorgeous 19 by 7 inch alloys and 235.50 tires. Later this year, when the R-Line package becomes available, it'll be offered with exclusive 19 and 20 inch wheel options. 
providing strong and sure-footed stopping power is a set of internally ventilated front discs measuring 13.4 by 1.2 inches and 11.8 by 0.5 inch solid rear discs. They're clamped down by twin piston and single piston calipers respectively. The Tiguan is the only vehicle in its class to offer an automatic post-collision braking system. Four-channel ABS is standard along with electronic brake force distribution, hydraulic brake assist, and a brake drying feature to optimize wet weather performance. An electronic parking brake is also included. The MQB platform is a unitary design featuring bolt-on front fenders and solid mounted front and rear subframes. The suspension is fully independent and consists of McPherson struts in front and a four-link design in the rear with front and rear stabilizer bars. It rides 7.9 inches off the ground with approach, departure, and breakover angles of 26.2, 23.3, and 19 degrees respectively. The electromechanical speed proportional rack and pinion steering takes 2.4 turns to lock and has a ratio of 13.9 to 1. The turning circle is measured at 37.7 feet. The steering is light and places a priority on comfort and smooth operation. It's more responsive and features a tighter turning circle than the previous Tiguan. While it doesn't offer a lot of feedback from the road, the firmness can be adjusted via the drive modes. When set to sport, steering effort and overall feel is increased. Like the 2018 Atlas I drove recently, the Tiguan is very well mannered. It's solid and composed over rough surfaces with excellent ride quality that soaks up the bumps but still retains admirable handling for its size. One nice thing is that you have the choice between either front wheel drive or four motion all wheel drive on every model. Despite being a permanent system, during light loads, 4Motion is able to decouple the rear wheels to help conserve fuel. At a moment's notice, the rear wheels can be re-engaged in just fractions of a second. The distribution of torque is routed through 4Motion's center differential, which is controlled by an electrohydraulic oil pump. Up to 50% of the available torque can be sent to the rear wheels at any given time. While the center differential acts longitudinally, front and rear electronic differential locks provide additional control laterally. As a function of the electronic stability control system, they're able to break a spinning wheel in order to transfer torque to the wheel on the opposite side for greater traction. Adding 4 motion also gets you a rotary dial on the center console with a bunch of drive modes, including on-road, snow, off-road, and custom off-road. On-road is the default mode. When active, you can press the button in the middle of the rotary dial to toggle between normal, sport, eco, and custom subsettings. Within each, the tuning parameters for the engine, gearbox, steering, optional adaptive cruise control, and more are varied. Snow and off-road mode work very similar, tying in additional systems to ensure the Tiguan can maintain traction and control over unstable road surfaces and terrain. Custom off-road mode is similar to the custom on-road mode, only further expanded to allow the driver to alter the steering, engine, gearbox behavior, as well as hill descent control, hill start assist, and more. The 2018 Tiguan builds upon its predecessor's EA888 2.0-liter turbocharged four-cylinder. Taking into consideration how most folks will be using the vehicle on a daily basis, the primary goal was to make the engine more efficient. A host of updates were applied inside and out, including but not limited to the cast iron block, the aluminum head and pistons, and the valve springs. Internal friction was reduced as well. The most significant update was the introduction of a modified combustion cycle. Known as the Budak cycle and unique to the Volkswagen group, it allows the intake valves to close much earlier than what's typically seen in the Miller cycle, where the intake valves close just before the end of the intake stroke. This effectively creates a longer combustion chamber to increase the rate at which incoming gases flow and improve the mixture of fuel and air. The valve train consists of chain-driven double overhead camshafts, four valves per cylinder, and variable intake valve timing. Fuel continues to be delivered via direct injection, only now the injectors are able to push fuel into the cylinders at a higher maximum pressure than before. The compression ratio is also higher, 11.7 to 1 versus 9.6 to 1, thanks to a modified piston crown. Maximum engine speed is around 6,500 RPM. With the aforementioned changes, the Tiguan now develops 184 horsepower between 4,400 RPM and 6,000 RPM, and 221 pound-feet of torque between 1,600 and 4,300 RPM. Peak horsepower is down compared to the last Tiguan, but it comes on at 700 fewer RPM than before. 
peak torque is up by 14 pound-feet and comes on at 100 fewer RPM than before. It's not exceptionally quick with an estimated 0 to 60 time of just over 8 seconds, but power comes on smoothly, aided by a quick shifting 8 speed automatic transmission. Pulling the shifter backward while in drive toggles between normal and sport transmission programming. Sport raises the shift points and activates dynamic throttle blips on downshifts. It also makes the transmission more responsive when driving spiritedly. Tiptronic manual shifting is also included. As expected, fuel economy sees a significant increase. Front wheel drive models are now rated at 22 miles per gallon in the city and 27 miles per gallon on the highway, with a combined average of 24 miles per gallon. All wheel drive models are rated at 21, 27, and 23 miles per gallon respectively. Unlike the last Tiguan, which required the use of premium fuel for maximum performance, this one is designed to use regular unleaded, which should save some money at the pump. Front wheel drive models carry a 15.3 gallon fuel tank, all wheel drive models carry a 15.9 gallon tank. An auto start stop system is standard. The interior of the Tiguan is undoubtedly Volkswagen, featuring a clean and well thought out dashboard that places everything within easy reach. As expected, build quality is excellent for this segment. There's plenty of soft touch surfaces, excellent insulation from wind and road noise, and a general air of solidity. It feels very much like a scaled down Atlas as it offers nearly the same level of equipment but in a more compact package. As I'll discuss in a moment, along with great interior flexibility with both people and cargo, a third row seat is standard on front wheel drive models and optional on all wheel drive models. SE models and up have a powered driver's seat with adjustable lumbar, but only the SEL gets memory presets. The passenger seat is manually adjustable. Compared to the Nissan Rogue, which I believe is the most comfortable in this segment, the Tiguan's front seats are firmer and have a tad more lateral support. On the entry model, cloth upholstery is standard. The SE and SEL add leatherette, while the SEL Premium gets genuine leather. Heatable front seats are included on the SE and above, a heated steering wheel standard on the SEL Premium. As far as practicality, there's a ton of storage space. Along with sizable felt-lined door pockets and a pop-down compartment on the left-hand side of the dash, there's a cavernous center console, two cup holders, and a tray on top of the dash. Ahead of the gear selector is a small cubby that houses an auxiliary input, two USB ports, and a 12-volt power outlet. The glove box is lockable and houses a CD player with two SD card slots. Of course, the Tiguan is available with an array of both passive and active safety systems. Standard across the board is a rear view camera and six airbags, including dual stage front airbags, front seat mounted side airbags, and full length curtain airbags. Blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert is added when stepping up to the SE, along with forward collision warning with autonomous emergency braking and pedestrian monitoring. Adaptive cruise control with stop and go is added with the SEL. Park distance control with steering assist is optional on the SEL, but standard on the SEL Premium, along with adaptive cruise control, lane departure warning with lane assist, and a 360 degree camera system. A panoramic sunroof is optional on the SE and standard on the SEL and SEL Premium. When equipped, it's accented by LED ambient lighting. The Tiguan S, SE, and SEL all feature six speaker audio systems. The SEL Premium's Fender audio system is the star of the show as its 12 channel amplifier delivers 480 watts of power through nine speakers. A subwoofer is built into the spare tire well. Depending on the model, there's three different touchscreen media options available. Shown here is the range topping Discover Media 8 inch touchscreen infotainment system with navigation, standard on both the SEL and SEL Premium. The screen is capacitive touch, just like a smartphone, so it behaves quickly and fluidly with gentle gestures. It resides underneath a piece of satin finished glass. Along with HD and satellite radio, you'll find Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and MirrorLink. Bluetooth and voice recognition is standard across the board, and all Tiguans except for the entry model have dual zone climate control. An exclusive feature to the SEL Premium is the Volkswagen Digital Cockpit, which is new for the Tiguan and first introduced in the Atlas. It's easily my favorite piece of tech as it's a fully digital, reconfigurable instrument cluster with a lot of different driver information data packed into it. You can also bring up the navigation, have some off-road data, and more. It looks very similar to Audi's virtual cockpit, but it uses a different processor and some other little different nuances, but it's a really cool feature nonetheless. Next, let's go ahead and shut her down and head towards the back seat and check out overall space and amenities. 
Being significantly larger than the last Tiguan, expect a very, very roomy interior. This is one of the largest vehicles in its segment now, right alongside the Nissan Rogue. The back seat or the middle row, depending on how it's configured, offers a tremendous amount of space even for people over 6 feet. You can slide it forward and backward with about 7 inches of adjustability and even recline it, so if you needed some more space to stretch out on a long trip or make some additional space if there's people sitting in the third row seat, it's easily done. The back seat is pretty comfortable, there's a good amount of padding, not a whole lot of lateral support, but you do have a fold down armrest with two cup holders. The headrests are also adjustable. As far as amenities, there's storage pockets on the seat backs and door panels. In the console, there's two adjustable air vents, a USB port and a power outlet, and up top, LED illumination, grip handles, and coat hooks. Climbing into the back seat is really easy, the middle row just slides forward. It's a tight environment that's probably going to be reserved more for children. There's some storage pockets to either side and a lot of glass to keep things very airy and open feeling. If you opt for an SEL or SEL Premium, a power operated liftgate is included. However, the Premium differentiates itself by offering a hands-free feature. If your hands are full, as long as you have the key fob on you, you can walk right up, kick your foot underneath the rear bumper and the liftgate will open automatically. Inside, cargo space varies slightly depending on if you have two or three rows of seats. Behind the third row, you have 12 cubic feet. Fold them down and space expands to 33 cubic feet. With the second row laid flat, you have a total of 65.7 cubic feet. If you can do without the third row, space is even more abundant. In fact, it's up to 58% more than what the last Tiguan offered. 37.6 cubic feet behind the second row and a total of 73.5 cubic feet. Underneath the trunk floor, you'll find a spare tire and the subwoofer for the available Fender audio system. There's plenty of cargo tie downs, small cubbies to either side, a 12 volt power outlet and illumination. Closing the lift gate is easy when powered, just the press of a button. There's also a delayed response that can be selected, so if you need to carry large items but still need to close the lift gate, you just press a button, grab your cargo and walk away. Sensors monitor when it's safe to close and the vehicle does the rest. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the 2018 Volkswagen Tiguan. Be sure to stay tuned next time, leave a like and subscribe today, there's always a lot more where that came from. Take care everyone.